Hi, welcome to Code Fighter class with Master Hun, and this is part two of why coding. And I want to apologize for part one. It kind of just dropped off at the end. I had a technical problem. I apologize for that. So again, this is uh, part two. Uh, I'm sorry, why coding part two, uh, continuing from uh, the last episode episode uh, episode four so this is episode five code fighters class with master Han. and this will be a short episode just finishing tying up what i was talking about uh before uh tying up what i was talking about in uh chap in episode i'm sorry in episode four why coding part one so basically the reason the main the one of the main points the main point that i want to emphasize and i try to get across to my students and the main point that i want adults to to get the main idea is that both children and adults are and i i do it too we are using the computer not as it was intended most people today are using their computers tablets smartphones as appliances and what do i mean by that i mean uh, for example when you you use your laptop to play laptop or desktop to play PC games, you're using the computer as an appliance. When you use, when you're using your smartphone to make phone calls, to watch YouTube videos, to text, you are using your smartphone, which is really a mini computer. You're using it as an appliance, which is, yeah. I mean, there is a there. Of course, there. Are, it's computers and tablets and smartphones are useful to use as an appliance. However, my point is, is that originally the computer was invented not to be an appliance. So what was intended not to be an appliance is now being primarily used as an appliance. The original, the original purpose of a computer is to be was to be a robot or servant robot in a general sense, not an actual physical robot but in the sense of an electronic device that will do will complete tasks and functions for you you do not have to be present you literally just tell it to do something or you press a button and then it does it with very with uh, with no input from you. It just does it by itself. Now I want to give you an example. There are many examples, but I just want to give you an example that I can show you that you could actually that's I think you would see that is very practical. So if we look here, uh, I have my solo learn. I'm in my uh, I'm in the uh, Solo Learn web page, their web app. I'm inside the their I'm using I'm in my uh, I'm in their code playground, and I have one of my uh, my uh, programs, Python programs, uh, here, and this is a password generator Mark II. Now, coming up with passwords. Another important lesson I try to teach my students and is for the foresee near foreseeable future, for better or worse. Uh, so probably in cons from now to the, this is the year 20, 2019 to probably to I'm guessing probably up until 2023, 20, 2025. We will still be using passwords. 
unfortunately passwords are not the best not the best way to to create security to create security online but it is what we're using right now and sad to say some adults i'm sorry a lot of the a lot of adults oh boy don't do are not are not adulting very well in terms of password management and i honestly i can't say i'm i can't i can't say that i'm perfect at it either i need to i'm definitely this year i'm going to try to do a better job be more systematic and i'm using the power of coding to help me so this is this is uh my password generator mark ii and i'm gonna my plan is to make it better and better um and to improve upon it so so i just quickly show you that this password generator does not once of course after i've coded it first you have to code the the password generator but after i've already finished coding it i'm gonna keep improving it but however all i have to do to generate a random a relatively uh, strong password is I just have to run the program the program itself will generate out of 21 if you can see over here how many pos pass possible passwords can this code generate I'm highlighting here 21,000 possible passwords and my plan is to increase that to make it to make the number of possible passwords it can generate even bigger but anyway so this code here which is not very, it's not a very long program. It's relatively short, I would say. It does not require any input from me. After I've coded it, it does not require any input. The only thing I need to do is just hit this run button. Okay, so I'll show an example. I hit the run button. The program, the computer, the program, oh, it's done. It does all the work. I don't have to waste any time trying to think up of a password. Okay. I'm not wasting 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, trying to think of a password. The program does it all for me. I just hit a but the run button and it does it for me. Okay? Out of a possible out of a possible out of a possible 21,000 passwords, it generates one for me randomly. So, so the password it generated was I'm highlighting it, coder Linus Parvolts, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. 69 asterisk dollar sign. Okay? So this fulfills uh, many of the many of the requirements of a strong password. It's greater than eight, it's uh, greater than, it's more than eight to twelve characters long. It has capital and upper it has lowercase and uppercase letters. It has uh, special characters and it has at least one number so see i didn't have to i didn't i didn't think i didn't have to think of anything <laughs> the computer does it <laughs> that's one of the uh, that's one of the slogans that's one of the catchphrases i teach my students okay you're an engineer and you need to do all this math who does all this math then the student responds by saying the computer does it okay of course it's important to understand the math and the physics and the engineering principles but the reality is that we live in the 21st century. It's 2019. The computer does most, almost all the math. It does the math for you, okay? So this is, that's the whole point of having a computer. You hit a button, you press a button. Let me, I'll press the button again. Press the button again, and it gives me a completely different password, okay? Oh, use the same number 69, but beyond that, it's the same, it's different. AI Jeff Bezos 69 question mark exclamation mark okay so generated a completely different password okay all I what did I do I just hit a button and the computer figured out out of the out of, out of the 21,000 possible passwords it could make it figured out it generated it generated random numbers for so I needed four random numbers to pick out 
an item from four different menus. I coded it to I coded to figure out to figure out what the four random numbers are going to be. Okay. And then it used those random numbers to figure out which one of these so objects one, which one of these things. So okay, I'm sorry. Over here in this example, code num, the first number was six. So it had to so it's telling it to pick so it so it picked the actually the seventh item, zero because it because the because the first item is actually numbered has an index number of zero. So zero, so bootcamp was zero, code ninja was one, coder is two, CPU is three, one, two, no, I'm sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So AI was the index number six, actually the seventh item, but it has an index number of six. And so then that was a step one. And then we go to the, I have a list of names. So it picked the uh, index number is one, which is actually the second item. So it will pick Jeff Bezos. And then we have the third number is one. So, so out of, uh, out of these different ran two digit random numbers, integers, it uh, picked 69, which is, has the index number of one, which is actually the second item. And so on until I have the it's it finished picks one out of one item out of each menu and as a menu a, a menu or list of four for a sets of items four lists or menus and then it let me hit the run button again okay and I have this password bootcamp Larry Page number and then twelve ampersand dollar sign okay the computer the computer didn't ask me anything it lit it literally does all the thinking for me it picks it figures out if it picks it determines it uh, picks it it figures out what the random numbers are going to be it generates the random numbers and then it select selects one item from each list and he adds it all together and gives me a re the result is uh, a password. Okay. And just quickly say, um, how do you remember this password? You need to obviously make a user memory technique, a memory device, and you could make a sentence or a little short story. So let's say for this password, bootcamp, Larry Page, 12, ampersand, dollar sign. You could say that uh, I went to a boot camp, and at the boot camp I met Larry Page, who was visiting the boot camp, and he decided to give everyone twelve million dollars. That's amazing, right? Twelve million dollars, and 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 you could say and 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 some and some. Uh, let's say and some. Five dollar bill, bills, okay, Amp, and ampersand dollar sign five dollar bills, okay. So you could make up some kind of story to help you remember this password, okay. Or you could, or you can um, keep a cop, or you can uh, put it into a word document with a password, or you could write it on a piece of paper and put it in your wallet. But uh, if possible, you want to try to. Uh, use a memory device and just keep it in your head and not actually store it anywhere. But of course, you might uh, want to, or you might want to write it down on a piece of paper and seal it in an envelope and lock it up in a safe or safe deposit box, or in a, or put it in a locked, or, or put it in a cabinet with a lock on it. So, but the main point is again is why coding? Why what is the point of learning how to code? Well, why coding? The real question is, why computers? Why do you have a computer? Why do you use a computer? Sadly, most people are using computers. Well, they could be using it as what it was actually intended for, to be a servant, a servant, a robot. But instead, most people, and, 
and, and, and yes, you can use a computer as an appliance. But the actual reason why computers were created was to be a servant, to be robots, to do work for us. That is the actual why you want to learn how to code. Even though you don't, even if you don't ever become a coder professionally, or if you never code a website, or if you never code an app, you can actually use coding to automate, to use the computer as it was actually intended to, to be a robot and a servant. And instead of you having, instead of you wasting your time digging up of passwords or doing monotonous routine tasks over and over, especially tasks that are that are done on computer or on the internet, you could have the computer do it for you. Okay, so that is why coding. This is, I believe, the number one reason. This is the reason that that I. This is the this is the lesson I want to, to get across to my students. You learn to code, to write code, to get the computer to be your servant or robot, and to save yourself a lot of time and wasting brain power on things that you could have the computer do for you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Code Fighter Class with Master Hun.